Hi, I'm Jeff Gonzalez, President of Trident Concepts, and today I'm here with Brownell's Daily Defense to talk to you about pistol trigger management. All right, so you've gotten to the range, you've started shooting, and now we're learning. And what we're trying to learn is how to properly move that trigger to the rear, causing minimal disruption to the sights. And if you can do that, wherever you're aiming is where the round is going to strike. So the first thing we want to talk about is the finger's position on the trigger. So the finger's position on the trigger should be such that I'm at the very low portion of the trigger. So if you think about this trigger as nothing more than a lever, to maximize leverage, I'm going to move my finger to the bottom position of this trigger. That's going to give me the most amount of leverage, which will allow me to move that trigger smoothly. The next thing that we talk about is what part of my trigger finger do I place on the trigger? I can go with the tip, the pad, or the knuckle. Now, if you put the tip on there, yes, you might get a little increase in tactile feel, but you may not have enough power to move that trigger smoothly. If you use the pad, the pad you might have enough power, but if you go all the way to the knuckle, you should easily have enough power to move that trigger straight to the rear, causing minimal disruption. Now, we all have different hand sizes, different finger lengths, different finger uh, strengths. So, generally speaking, going low and deep is going to solve many of the shooter's errors that we see. The last thing we talk about is a lot of times shooters are taught to grip the gun as high as they can possibly get it. And when they grip that high, what ends up happening is their finger accidentally rubs against the frame. Shooter may not even be aware of that. And when their finger rubs up against that frame, what they end up doing is they end up pressing the firearm to the side that they are pressing from. So if I'm a right-handed shooter, I'm pressing on the right-hand side, I'm moving the gun to the left. So my shots will be left. So that's an easy fix right off the bat. Now, if you place your finger on the trigger such that the tip is pointing 90 degrees, that means that you have your trigger finger placed on the face of the trigger, and that's the best position. If the tip of your finger is pointing up, that means that you're pushing on the edge, which will mean that your shots were going to favor to the left. If my trigger finger is pointing down or back, what that means is that I'm actually pulling the trigger or my shots are going to be pulled to the right. So 90 degrees will ensure that my finger is on the face of the trigger, allowing it to move straight to the rear with minimal disruption. Now, the way we teach the trigger's movement is in stages. We want to be able to move at such a controlled pace that we can feel all the stages of the trigger's movement. So most modern day firearms are striker fired pistols, which means that they're going to have these three stages, but they'll probably be unique or different. So the first stage is what we call the slop, which is all this free travel on the firearm. So you're going to want to take that up as soon as you possibly can. The next is going to be what we call the slack. So that means that as I take out the slop, there's a little bit of movement, a little bit of movement that is called the slack. From there is the last stage, which is the squeeze, which is just a light amount of pressure causes the firing pin to be released. Now, slop, then slack, then squeeze. Slop, then slack, then squeeze. Slop, then slack, and then squeeze. Now, once you have been able to apply this using those voice commands, the next progression is going to be to move to a countdown. So that'll be more of a three, a two, and then a one. So that might look something like this. Three, then two, and then one. Three, two, and then one. At the very end of the progression is your ability to move that trigger from the front to the rear in one fluid motion. Now, it may not come quickly, and this is what I try to encourage all new shooters to do, is be patient and take your time. Now, some of the common mistakes that we see when we're learning trigger management is when shooters take a running start at that trigger. So they move from the home position onto the face and they just keep moving with that same force that they started with. And what that does is that is going to apply so much force to the trigger that the muzzle is actually going to move before the bullet leaves the barrel. The second common mistake that we see is typically when folks uh, will apply a little bit of pressure, take out the slop, but they don't take out that slack. So they go from three to one. And when they go three to one, what ends up happening is they still get a little bit of a, of a dip in the muzzle before that round leaves the barrel. The last trigger error that we see, or the common errors that we see, are going to be when shooters are in such a hurry that what they'll do is they will 
they will slap the trigger and immediately come flying off the trigger. You're going to want to avoid doing that because any time that your finger is moving quickly off, it means that it was moving quickly on. All right, so those are some of the most common mistakes that you'll see. Let's see a live fire demonstration of these drills. We'll start with the verbal countdown. So once I get in a good shooting stance, I'm going to index on the target, line up my sights. Once my sights are confirmed and I'm ready to fire, I'm going to go ahead and touch the trigger. I'm going to go ahead and count down, slop, slack, and squeeze. I'll do that again. Slop, slack, and squeeze. And again, slop, slack, and squeeze. After I've done that a couple times, then I'm going to go ahead and move to that countdown of three, two, one. So once I'm on the target, I'm going to go ahead and count down three, two, one. I'll do that again. Three, two, one. Do that again. Three, two, one. Do that again. And we'll just keep working those drills until we really have good control of that trigger's movement as we're firing the gun. All right, if you have any questions or comments, or experiences that you'd like to share with us, please put them down below. Until then, I'm Jeff Gonzalez. Take care and stay safe.